This video will show how to create the following two small Groovy programs. First, creating a new Groovy file in an empty directory, implementing it with a trivial program, printing the classical phrase Hello World to the screen. Then the Hello World program will be replaced with another program, which receives input arguments from the command line and also receives keyboard input from the user. This video is part of at least one playlist showing how to do the above with different programming languages. There should be a link to that playlist in the description below. Prerequisites. You, the viewer of this video, are assumed to have some skills in at least some programming language. I will not explain basic concepts such as what is a variable or what is an array or what is a for loop. Even if you have never written source code with Groovy, you are assumed to be able to understand, for example, what this Groovy code below does. In this video, I am using Windows 10, and I start by showing which versions of Groovy and Java I have installed. The version of Groovy is 3.0.8. The version of Java is 70.0.1. The Windows command there shows that I am starting from an empty directory. Now I create a new directory called Groove with the Windows command MD. Then I navigate into the new directory with CD Groove. Then I start Visual Studio Code by typing code and a dot, which is the path to the current directory. When Visual Studio Code has started, I create a new Groove file, arguments underscore inputs dot Groove in the new directory, Groovy. When you are writing a Groovy script, you do not need to put the code into a class or any main function or main method, which you need to do in quite many other programming languages. Instead, you can write code in the file directly on a file global level outside of any function or method. I am now implementing the initial trivial Groovy script by calling the method println to print hello world to the screen. You do not need to import anything to be able to use the method println. So it can basically be considered as a global function. Now I am showing with the Windows command there that the Groovy file has been created in the directory Groovy. The Groovy script can now be executed by typing Groovy and then the file name. When the script is executed, hello world is displayed on the screen just as expected. Now I will replace the initial Hello World implementation with a program that will receive and print arguments from the command line. The program will also ask the user to enter the name and will then print to the screen what the user typed. For this purpose, I have prepared some pseudocode that I will paste into the program, but within comments, since of course it would not be possible to execute. Then I will modify the code by changing it to Groovy code that can be executed. Now I am showing how the program arguments will be provided to the program when it is executed. The arguments will be added after Groovy and then the name of the Groovy file and then a space between each argument. So here I am showing three arguments for the program. The program arguments are available in a string array called argas. I am now iterating that array in a for loop. Inside the for loop, the program arguments are printed to the screen by calling println. In the loop, I create the string with so-called string interpolation with a dollar sign before the variable name. In Groovy, you can often use def instead of a specific type, but you can also choose to specify the type explicitly. The for loop iterates through a string array, and therefore you can type string instead of def in the beginning of the for loop. If you would want to refer to a specific element in the array, you can write an index number in square brackets. For example, if you want to use the third element, you can write two within square brackets. But then you should also first check the array object's property length or its method size so that you do not try to go beyond the size of the array and then get an array index out of bounds exception. Now I will implement the second part of the program. 
receiving input through the keyboard while the program is being executed. The question, what is your name, is printed by the method print instead of print LM because I want the input prompt to be displayed on the same line. In other words, I do not want to print the line break character at the end, which is done with the method print LM. The reading from the keyboard will be done with a reader object, which is an instance of the class buffered reader. The reader object can be created by using the new reader method that can be called on the input stream object returned by the static field in in the class system. The buffered reader object has a method readline that can be called to receive input from the user. The readline method will return a string with the text typed by the user. You can use def to declare variables, but you can also choose to declare the types explicitly. For example, the variable name is a string and the reader object is a buffered reader. Then I print out the string in the variable name with the method println. And I'm using string interpolation with the text hello as a prefix and then a dollar sign before the variable name inside the string. When I execute the script, you can see that it works as expected. I have now executed a Groovy script with all the code at the file global level. I mean the code is not located inside any class or method or function. Finally, I will show that you can also execute Groovy code in the same way as you execute Java code within a class and the main method. Therefore, I have prepared such a class which is similar to Java code, but there are some differences. So this code you are now looking at can not execute as Java code without some changes that I will now mention. There are actually six things which I now will mention that would need to be fixed in order for the code in this file to be executed as Java code. One, the file name must be the same as the class name plus the file extension .java. Two, most of the rows must end with a semicolon. Three, error handling is necessary, either with try catch or declaring a throws clause for the main method. Four, string interpolation with a dollar character does not work with Java. Five, import statements are required. Alternatively, use long names in the code that include the package names. For example, java.io.bufferedreader. Six, print and println does not work. But you can instead use out.print and out.println if you also add import static java.lang.system.out. These six things that I have now mentioned would need to be changed if I would like to change the code to work as Java code. But now I will instead show that the code works as it is when you execute it with the Groovy runtime. First, in the main method, I am looping through the program arguments in two ways. The first for loop uses an index for the array, and the second for loop is a so-called enhanced for loop, which also works with Java from the version Java 5. In the first for loop, concatenation with the plus operator is used to create the string that is printed to the screen. It also works with Java. In the second loop, string interpolation is used with a dollar sign before the variable name. It does not work with Java, which would instead print dollar $R for each iteration of the loop, instead of printing the contents of the variable R. Then the code is showing three ways to read input from the keyboard, and all three also works with Java, except from the previously mentioned differences that need to be addressed, such as semicolons and import statements for Java code. The first two alternatives are using the console class and then the scanner class. The third alternative shown here uses the buffered reader, which the previous Groovy script also did but it takes a little more code to create a buffered reader with this Java-like syntax. New buffered reader with the argument new input stream reader 
which in turn takes the argument system.in. When you use Groovy, you can instead use system.in.newreader to create a buffered reader, which you could see in the previous Groovy script. You can, of course, pause the video here if you want to take a closer look at the source code. But now I will execute the code. When I now execute the Groovy class, you can see that it works as expected. 